Hello, everyone, and welcome back to the All Things New podcast. Thank you so much for tuning in for another episode. It's been a minute. It's been like almost two months, which is crazy. But oh my word, I've been so busy. The last episode was in early December, and after that was Christmas, lots of orders. Then I traveled for about a month. I was in Florida, then I went down to South America, and I got back last week. So it's been a very, very busy month and a half for me. But I'm so happy to be back home and be back on the podcast. It's been a minute and I've been thinking of some episodes to record and different topics. And um, I'm just excited to be back here with you guys. Thanks again for tuning in. So today's episode is titled, Are Soulmates a Biblical Concept? If you're familiar with like fairy tales and rom-coms there's a lot of like soulmate talk like oh my gosh they're my soulmates like we belong together we were made for each other things like that but if we look at the bible we don't really see this concept of like a soulmate what we do see is in genesis um Genesis chapter 2, verses 23 through 25, this is when the Lord creates um, Eve from the rib of Adam. And it says, at last, the man exclaimed, this one is bone from my bone and flesh from my flesh. She will be called woman because she was taken from man. This explains why a man leaves his father and mother and is joined to his wife. And the two are united into one. Other versions say the two will become one flesh. Um, And then it says, now the man and his wife were both naked, but they felt no shame. And in Mark chapter 10, Jesus is referencing this when talking about marriage and divorce. And he says, let no one split apart what God has joined together. And so there sometimes I feel like there's a misconception about like in Christianity, like biblically is like, is soulmates, is this concept, is this like a biblical concept? I would argue that it is not because while like, you know, Adam and Eve, Adam, Eve was created from Adam and they were created together. It says the two will become one flesh when they are joined, when they consummate. And so the perspective that I have from reading the Bible, from reading the different things that the Bible has written, is that soulmates are created when there is a union. Like you become soulmates with the person you choose to marry. Now this also can get into the concept of like God's sovereignty. Does God choose a person for you? Does he have an ideal? I do think that God has an ideal for you. But I don't think that means that there's only one person you're meant to be with, right? Um, and that would, of course, if you get with the wrong, the wrong person, that would throw everything off hypothetically. And then, you know, like a butterfly effect of the wrong thing happening and it just trickling down and messing everything up like dominoes that are stacked next to each other. Um, I think that this concept of soulmates kind of gives us too much power because it 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 insinuates that we have to get with the right person and if we don't we mess everything up or we mess up God's will and I don't necessarily think that people talk about soulmates when they're talking about like God's will but sometimes they do sometimes you're like you know you're going to mess up God's will and I've talked about this in previous episodes like can you mess up God's will for your life and I've talked about the fact that God takes into account the fact that we will make mistakes because we do we're imperfect and he knows that he's not just going to create a will for us thinking that we're going to be perfect and thinking that we're going to be obedient every time he asks us to do something he knows we're imperfect he knows we fall short and our um, mistakes are not surprises to him and he takes all of that into account when writing you know writing out our story when when he has his will for our lives and so we don't have to fear making mistakes and so I think that the concept of soulmates is kind of like the antithesis of of walking with the Lord 
um, because it's if you get it wrong, it kind of insinuates that you mess everything up. But I believe that the biblical perspective regarding this is that two people become soulmates. They become soulmates after they have chosen to come together. Um, And it's not like they're pre-selected, I guess, but it's that they make the choice. They choose to come together. They choose to marry. They obviously consummate and they choose to make that decision to become each other's soulmate. I wanted to read a passage from Song of Solomon, chapter 3, verses 1 through 4. And this is the woman speaking. You see this um, back and forth of the woman speaking about her lover, her husband, and then you see the man speaking about his lover and his wife. And so this is the woman speaking here. And she says, By night on my bed I sought the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. I will rise now, I said, and go about the city in the streets and in the squares. I will seek the one I love. I sought him, but I did not find him. The watchmen who go about the city found me. I said, have you seen the one I love? Scarcely had I passed by them when I found the one I love. I held him and would not let him go until I had brought him to the house of my mother and into the chamber of her who conceived me. I love this passage. It's very beautiful. It's like this searching of the one she loves, of her husband. And I think that is such a beautiful picture of this pursuit. And there's like a, it's it's beautiful because Song of Solomon, there's this pursuit of both parties, like just this passion for each other, this this undying love of like, I will I will move mountains to get to the one I love. And I think that this is such a beautiful thing, but this is something that I believe is built. Um, and I think that sometimes the idea of soulmates is like, you're perfect for each other, everything's perfect, and there's gonna be this perfect passion from the get-go, and while there should be passion, passion is good, and we should have, like, if there's a husband and wife, they should be passionately in love with each other, but that's built. Love isn't merely a feeling, it's a choice, and so a couple can make the choice to become each other's soulmates. It doesn't mean that, like, you know, they're pre-selected again, but can mean like they choose to mar- come together to get married. They look at each other's values and look at each other's goals and, you know, see, see, they see that they're aligned and then they become each other's soulmates through work, right? Through this, this um, effort, this intentionality that comes behind a marriage, a godly marriage. You see this working towards becoming a better person and of course it's not just to become a good person but to honor the lord if a, if a couple is submitted to the lord he will do work in them they will be sanctified in the process they will even more begin to reflect the purpose of marriage which is to serve as an example of christ's love for his bride and the bride goes through this period of sanctification of holiness, of becoming more like Christ. And there's this constant, not not really concept, but it's a principle of constantly becoming better in Christianity, in the Bible. And I think that that is also applicable regarding marriage. No one is perfect. No one enters into a marriage perfect and no one leaves a marriage, ideally death, (laughs) till death do us part. as a perfect person, right? There's no perfection here. There's no lack of mistakes as we are living on this earth. But having perfection in mind, not having so much pressure on yourself to where you're like, I have to be perfect or I'm a failure. Failure. That's not what I'm talking about. But having this goal of being more like Jesus and we work on that constantly. And so the same applies to a husband and a wife working towards becoming more like Jesus in that relationship. So the whole concept of soulmates isn't really biblical. However, if you want to use the term, quote unquote, soulmates, I think that couples become soulmates to each other. And again, like if someone dies um, 
or if there's a divorce and they marry someone else did they mess up that other person's like quote unquote soulmate match like do you have more than one soulmate like then it gets to this this weird place and this rabbit hole of like you know possible option it's just you know i don't think that it's a biblical concept but i think that a couple when they come together if the lord's hand is on it they become soulmates they have to make that choice though you have to make the choice to be loving and intentional um, with your spouse but that can be built i think that soulmates can be built you can build that you can build that cohesion when a couple first gets together they're you know two different people coming from different backgrounds different places and they you know have a different perspective and they're coming together they become one flesh and in that they have to learn more about the other person and be able to mesh more with them and learn more about the other person and walk together. Um, and that's something that's built. You're not just going to walk into a marriage and know everything about that person or know what makes them happy, know what pleases them, know what makes them sad, know what know what makes them upset. You're not going to walk into a marriage knowing all the ins and outs of that person. I mean, it's really impossible to know every single thing about someone. But that's the beauty of, of, of this growth of a couple growing together learning about each other submitting to the lord having the biblical headship that's aligned in the bible and the marriage and working towards becoming more like christ but in that again there's you know this principle of working towards things of becoming better of sanctification it applies to couples learning more about each other and how can you know how like the couple asking themselves how can we become more like Christ? How can we respond more like the Lord? How can we be more like him in the way I relate to my spouse? So again, I think that soulmates are built, that they're created, that they're not something that is predetermined because that would throw a lot of things off. Um, but I think really it, it provides also um, more of a an open relaxed mindset of like not feeling the pressure to find that perfect person i do believe that the lord has an ideal for us to marry um but i wouldn't call that a soulmate because that's something you have to build that type of relationship like that cohesion that's something that's built it's not something that just happens as soon as you become a couple right it's built it's something that grows and builds and hopefully flourishes if you have um if you are watering it like you know like a plant if you are taking care of it if you're being a good steward um that is something that will grow and flourish and become beautiful so this is really an opinion piece i mean i obviously backed up what i was um the ideas i had with scripture but i mean you know you can have your own opinion however I don't believe that soulmates are biblical because there's not really that concept that we see in the Bible per se explicitly. Um, but again, I do believe the Lord has someone ideal for you. But if you don't marry that ideal person, like if you if something happens like you, I don't know. I think that the Lord may have a couple ideal people for you, but I don't know. Um, that's up to him. But yeah, soulmates, I don't think is a biblical concept, but soulmates can be made. They can be created and cultivated, and I think that's a very beautiful thing. That is all I have for today's episode. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. I would like to do for episode 100. This is episode 98. So I would like to do a Q&A for episode 100. So there's a Q&A section on Spotify. Um... If you want to answer any questions or ask any questions, I mean, you can ask them there if you'd like. It's up to you. Um, and you could also email me if you want or if you follow me on Instagram or Twitter. You can also shoot questions to me there. But my email, if you are interested in emailing me, is podcast.allthingsnew at gmail.com. It's up to you, but I'm probably going to put up a Q&A on Instagram and Twitter um, if people have questions. But I figured I'd just do that for episode 100 because why not? Anyways, thank you guys again so much for listening and tuning in.
if you haven't followed the podcast, that would be great. That would make me happy. Also, if you haven't given a rating or review and you've been a listener for a while, that would mean so much to me and I would appreciate that so very much. Anyways, thank you guys so much. I love y'all and I will talk to y'all in the next one. Ciao.